What's up everyone? I'm Connor and you're watching No Passport Needed, where I'm making a dish from every single country in the world. Today we're going to Turkey and making Iskender Kebab. Iskender is a type of donor kebab from Bursa in northwestern Turkey. Donor kebab is a popular Turkish dish where meat is cooked on a vertical rotisserie, sliced thinly from the sides, and served with pita, similar to a gyro or shawarma meat. Iskender specifically uses lamb meat, and it's served over sliced pita bread with a tomato sauce, butter, and yogurt. I'm going to make a Turkish pita today, which is slightly thicker than your standard pita, but you could also make this using a store-bought pita bread. Also, because I don't have a meat spit, we're going to use a method from Aslam's Turkish table to thinly cut the meat and tenderize it. Alright, I can't wait to eat this, let's get into it. To start, we're going to take 2 pounds of lamb shoulder and cut it into thin slices. I found that it was a lot easier to cut after putting it in the freezer for 45 minutes. Quickly tenderize with the back of a wooden spoon, a mug, a mallet, a blender, Okay, maybe not the blender. Add them to a bowl while we prepare our marinade for the meat. For the marinade, we're going to start by processing two onions into a puree. Filter out the pulp by pouring through a sieve and stirring. Toss the pulp and save the onion juice. To the onion juice, we're going to add 3 tablespoons olive oil, 2 teaspoons dried oregano, 2 teaspoons red pepper flakes, and a heavy pinch of kosher salt and black pepper. Pour over the lamb and mix together. Cover and put in the fridge overnight to marinate. Alright, it's the next day and we're going to start making our pita bread. Mix 87 grams of lukewarm water with dried yeast and half a teaspoon of sugar. Let that sit to froth while we sift 450 grams of flour with one teaspoon of salt. Make a well in the middle. Add our yeast mixture along with two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons yogurt, and another 87 grams of water. Mix slowly by hand until we have a sticky dough, adding water as necessary. Move to a floured surface and continue to knead until elastic and smooth. Oil a bowl, add the dough, and cover with a towel to rise for one to two hours. After the dough has doubled in size, punch it down, knead again, and divide into two pieces. Shape the two pieces into flat rounds by using the heel of your hand to stretch it out wide and flat. I should have stretched mine out further and you'll see why in a minute. Indent the top with your fingers. Oil and heat two pans in the oven for a couple of minutes. Place your rounds on the pans, beat an egg, and brush over the top before sprinkling with sesame seeds and nigella seeds. I don't have those, so I sprinkled with black sesame seeds here as well. Bake at 400 Fahrenheit, 200 Celsius for 20 minutes. Once cool enough to handle, wrap in a towel and set to the side. This will keep the crusts from crisping up too much for our final dish. Onto our simple tomato sauce. Pour two tablespoons of olive oil in a small pot over medium heat. Add three tablespoons of tomato paste along with some red pepper flakes. Season with salt and pepper and saute briefly before adding two cups of water. Simmer for about 10 minutes and remove from the heat. Back to take a look at our bread after it's cooled. I'm super pleased with that color, but as you can see, these spring up in the oven a lot and should be about as thick as two store-bought pita breads. This is about double that. Regardless, they'll be delicious. So we're gonna take this guy and slice it up into cubes. Along with that, we'll slice up half a green pepper and cut two tomatoes into wedges. On to finally cooking our meat. Heat some oil in a large pan and sear our thinly sliced lamb in batches. Try to give it some room in the pan so it sears rather than steams. Given how thin the lamb is sliced, this cooks quickly, so don't go anywhere. After batching the lamb, toss in our green pepper and tomatoes to get some color for a minute. Lastly, add any remaining marinade and a couple tablespoons of butter to the pan. Scrape up any fond from the bottom before tossing in our pita to heat up and crisp a little. It smells fantastic in here, so I can't wait to get this plated up. 
To plate this up, start off with a generous layer of our pita topped with some of that tomato sauce. Next, welcome our lamb to the party along with some more tomato sauce. This is also frequently served with a large dollop of yogurt on the side. Place our green peppers and tomatoes on top before the coup de gras. Drizzle a few tablespoons of melted butter over the top. It's torturous to be in the room with this before eating it. It smells so good. This dish truly feels like the whole is greater than the sum of all its parts. Each part on its own is solid, but together they become something else entirely. The lamb is incredibly flavorful. The onion and oregano come through just right and aren't overpowering. The pita soaks up all of the delicious sauces. The tomato sauce ties the other two together surprisingly well. It was all right on its own, but worked really well with the meat and doesn't muddy any of the flavors. And the butter is, well, come on, it's butter. I'll definitely make this again, but I'll do a couple things differently. Namely, shaping the pita out wider and flatter for more crust surface, playing with a new tomato sauce, and trying out new methods of cutting the meat. The lamb was fantastic, but could have been more tender to be even closer to donor meat. Check out Rafika's kitchen linked below if you want to try her method to get the right texture. Thanks for watching. I had a lot of fun making the Iskander, and it was really fun to see how you can make something traditionally made on a spit at home. Let me know what you think, or if you have any countries that you'd like to see next. If you want to follow along and see where we go next, feel free to subscribe. See you in the next one.